Yeah. Adults, not little mini adults. Yeah, oh, mini adults these days. Are we set? Yeah, excellent. Thank you very much for doing this interview, You're by welcome. the way. <laughs> Just in You're case welcome. I don't say that. So, Sean, you know, you're playing an afternoon gig on mm -hmm. a Sunday. What do you think of doing these sorts of things? Well, this is the first time we've had an afternoon gig, to tell you the truth, and I find it quite nice because uh, for the first time I've had a Sunday at home, I can rest and relax. I went to mass, had dinner with my family, and got to watch Dangerfield, and now came at a leisurely pace and we've got another gig tonight later on as well so we've got two sort of luck to work in instead of working last night. You're working quite hard at the moment because you've got a new single out soon mm -hmm. and you're in Dangerfield that's still running and mm -hmm. you're doing all these touring and stuff. Mm -hmm. How do you get time to fit it all together? Um, it's just ferociously busy really. We're sort of on, we've been on the road for about five or six, seven weeks now but where it's been kind of just constant gigs every night and we've all had sort of moans and tired and everything but you get over it and we will we'll have a good laugh. I mean it's it's not as if it's like a hard job to do, well I say a hard job, it is quite hard but it's it's so enjoyable it makes it worthwhile. Do you think you've sort of got rid of the the bit about you know all these soap stars going into pop music, do you think that's all behind you now? Um, I don't know, I, don't, I think it's, it's very difficult because it takes a while to shake it off, uh, you know, a lot of people have always had their sort of preconceptions and stuff, but I think, you know, it's a bit boring, everyone's heard it, and I mean if the records are no good then they just won't get in the charts and nobody has anything to complain about, whereas if they are good then they deserve to be there up with the rest of them, but you know, uh, there are people out there who are still going, yeah, well I'm not buying it to sing or anything, which is fine, you know, I don't, I don't mind, just as long as some people are getting pleasure out of it, I'll carry on doing it. Now, I did hear that um, the BBC have had more fan mail for you than anyone else they have ever, ever had on well, the BBC. that can't be true. Terry Wogan must have got more than me. Him and his knees. <laughs> yeah. I thought Terry was the man. <laughs> no, well, I don't know what to say about that. It's, um, How do you cope with it? I mean, suddenly you must have well, I've got a fan a letters all the time. Like You've got a rose, haven't you, today? I have. I, have. I mean, that's yeah. so sweet. It's lovely. It's lovely. It's like checking into a hotel and finding the chocolate on the pillow. <laughs> Absolutely delightful. But, you know, it's one of those things that, uh, you know, they're so flattering and they're so good for your ego and everything. If you take a lot of time thinking over them and thinking how wonderful it all is, you can find very quickly you've got so wrapped up in that that all of a sudden it's gone and then you find it was a necessity. So it's best to just come and say thank you and try not to think too much about it, just concentrate on the How job. did you feel when you did your first autograph? Um, I was in my school, it was just when I got the part of uh, Tegs in Grain Chill. And I told all my mates, and I went, Oh wow, you'll be famous. Can we do an autograph? And I, I was like, You're my mate, what do you want it for? I'm not even famous. But they asked anyway, and I ended up doing the whole class, and a, a lot of them have still got it to this day, I think. And uh, I was sort of <laughs> just learning as I went along. It was very flattering, it's, it's quite exciting when you tend to. I mean, it is quite a big <coughs> ego trip thing mm. as well. Do you find that you feel that you've changed at all because of the fame and being sort of suddenly um, in the limelight so much? I think I've been lying if I said that I didn't. I have, I've gone through stages because I've been doing this for sort of eight years straight where I've been sort of fairly consistently in the public eye and, um, you know, on top of normal growing up which you go through changes and every teenager gets stroppy from one time or another you know with being kind of famous as well it just adds arrogance in there as well and it you know it can be rather rude and uncomfortable my family have had to sit down and say look you know you're getting a bit starry and that and it scares me and I kind of go back to normal for a while and every now and then if I get a little bit arrogant then they'll just give me a thump but you know it sounds almost like too good to be true system but it you know it's working and I mean, this club this afternoon is for under 18s. Did mm. you ever go to any clubs like that, under 18s? Yeah, I used to go to one called, uh, what's it called? It was in Romford somewhere, Academy. And I used to love them because, you know, we, were, we weren't at the stage where we were particularly into alcohol. We just wanted to be at nightclubs and be like, you know, like Dynasty sort of thing, you know. So it's, it's excellent. And you get to find out what a club is like. You get to sort of know your way around and get to know who to kind of just be careful of and just to have a good time safely uh, before you go out and start doing it properly. I think they're good, why not? Why not indeed? Well thank you ever so much, I'd better let you get on because I know you've got to get on there and do your thing. Mm. Um, the new single, just tell us briefly about that. Uh, it's called Suddenly, uh, shot the video in Miami and it was great fun and it's out on March the 1st.